Okay, uh, we've got a time situation, so we're going to begin. We assume that uh, our colleagues and uh, friends and neighbors will be showing up as we go along. Uh, and um, we should uh, also assume the responsibility of uh, helping to uh, catch people up as they come. And even those that don't come, uh, we'll be sending out a little report, but uh, we have to uh, realize there's nobody working on this but us. There's no staff. There's nobody else we can tell what to do. We have to tell ourselves what to do. And if people don't uh, know, it's on us. We can't point to somebody else. Now, uh, we have uh, a draft plan. Everybody should get a copy of this draft. It's right uh, up here on the table. I got it. I just want to make some words of introduction because uh, I'm not sure everyone uh, is aware of, uh, of everything. First is that all of our meetings <coughs> that we've been having in the community uh, have been videotaped. Uh, and therefore, just as with the city council meetings and those kind of meetings, there is absolute transparency. No one should be unaware or uninformed about what is happening since all meetings are videoed and can be watched. So anybody who says they don't know what's going on simply hasn't taken the time to look at the videos. That's number one. Number two, we have a listserv. And uh, those of you who have attended meetings know that information is being disseminated via the listserv. Uh, so uh, if you're not on the list, sir, uh, be sure and uh, make sure that I get your email uh, so you can be on the list, sir. We are focused really on two points in the community. First is the yellow zones in the service area of UC to B. Uh, the main area is in North Champaign, but there are a couple of other uh, non-contiguous uh, areas that are also involved. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is, we're focused on all of Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy, because that's where the rings are. North Champaign and the service area is where the hookups have occurred and the revenue cash flow is current. And therefore, that is where we are now, and that is our current focus. On the other hand, all of Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy is where we are going. And therefore, as UC2B rolls out to those areas, revenue starts coming in from those areas, then uh, our focus will be uh, to extend whatever it is we decide on to the uh, rest of the community. Now, uh, when we ask the question of what this is all about, the central focus is on the digital <coughs> divide. Therefore, part of the conversation has to be, what is the digital divide? In other words, before we have a prognosis, we need a diagnosis. You can't get help for a disease the doctor doesn't know you have. We are the doctors in the morning. And therefore, it is our understanding of the digital divide that helps us design the plan to overcome the digital divide. All of us have not had the same experience with regard to the information revolution. And I just want to take a minute to uh, put a sort of a point on that information revolution. In other words, if you think about when African Americans were enslaved and you think about the importance of literacy. Uh, because if you couldn't read, you couldn't understand what was going on. And if you were to read, for example, Frederick Douglass's uh, autobiography, when he was taught to read by the slave master's wife, and uh, what a wonderful 
revelation that was for him. Uh, the second revelation, of course, is he duped it out with the slave master, and then he realized that he could whip him, and therefore he didn't have to be a slave forever. So maybe there are two points here with regard to Fred. Uh, now we're in the same situation, only now it's information literacy, it's digital literacy. That's the difference. And uh, those of you who know something about African American history, you know the importance of how people were sitting by candlelight to learn how to read. And of course, the important thing there, among other things, is to read the Bible. Now, we're in the information age, and anyone who doesn't have access to the internet uh, remains isolated and unable to function in the society. Now, many people come to these meetings looking for a job. They think that community benefit fund is going to do things. And I'm sorry to tell everybody, it is not going to happen. However, what is going to happen is we can attack the digital divide. And if somebody crosses over the digital divide and becomes computer literate, their employability goes up exponentially. So this is not a place to get a job, but it's a bridge across which, if you travel, you can get a job. In other words, the Community Benefit Fund is not going to be a lot of money. So anybody come in here looking for a handout, looking, thinking that you're going to get some money, that is not going to happen. However, if we're interested in dealing with the digital divide and looking at what will happen if our community has these skills and has this ability to move, in its own interest in the information age. This is what we're talking about. So it's a digital divide. And it's not uh, all the things we hope to get, but we hope that if you could cross over the bridge, that that puts you in a position for greater cultural productivity, for greater employability, greater health care, and certainly educational advancement. In other words, it's what you do with the education. It's do you really want a job? That's what we have to communicate to our community. This is not a welfare program. This is not a handout. And there's not going to be that much money. And I just want to establish that up front so nobody has any false ideas about what this is going to be. Give you an example. We have about 1,000 or less than 1,000 uh, people who have subbed to UCDB thus far. Um, Next month, UC to B will be uh, discussing the organizational form for the future. That proposal will be on the table, I'm, I understand, next month. What that means is the community has to be organized, and at every meeting that takes place once the new organization is put on the table. Because if we are not there, then we will be whining after the fact. That's too late. I just want everybody to get the reality of what we're talking about here. Yes? Now, what are you saying? It, uh, less than a thousand people have subbed. Subscribed to okay. UC to B. And so the end of March is, is, the, is the deadline. The beginning or of March. March 1st. I mean, March 1st is the deadline. That's right. So what are you doing now? Are, are those people you employ still trying to get those people? Still got trying to get people up until March 1st? To do? That's what I understand. OK. But uh, do you have the right, right people getting people? Because I don't know anybody who's signing up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, do you have the right people employed? Uh, I mean, are they getting getting out and trying to get the people? Because we, uh, how many were you looking for? Well, uh, perhaps I mean, I, someone else I heard, here has. I heard, I heard a different number, like five thousand or uh, more than that, and you we only have to less the people. The, the, the truth is this: here are the real numbers. We had as our objective 2,500 
Oh, 25. people to subscribe. Okay. And we only have we have less than a thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. I was just asking my friend here. Um, I I don't even know who do I speak to or where do I go to subscribe or sign up for something like this. Were you here at a previous meeting? I, uh, well, I was at the meeting at the uh, public library. Are you on the list, sir? I don't. I signed a list. Do you but get messages? Do you get messages from the Community Benefit Fund Committee? Yes. All of those messages, there are links there that take you right to the website that explain everything. Well, yes. And if you need more information, here's something right here. Okay, that's it. And the resolution is on this document. Okay. But so, he said to sign up. Yeah. How do he sign up? How yeah. does he sign up? Yeah, that's the question I'm looking for. Like, who do I speak to? I mean, just off general knowledge, like, I wouldn't have no. I read this, and I didn't see anything in here that said, this is where you come to sign up, or this is who you talk to. But I think the last, and what the phone last, number you call to sign up? I think the last, one of the last emails that went out in the last three or four days said, mm -hmm. March 1 deadline. Yeah. Right. This is this is the link to who to go to. So that that particular email is aimed at that deadline and signing up. So that's the okay. So maybe the, I missed that email, or maybe I didn't get it. But the point is, is that just like she's saying that we there's a lack of people signing up. It's because although you might have sent that email out, everybody didn't get the email, or maybe I had just so maybe I missed it. Okay, so, here's here's the problem. Here's the problem. <clears throat> Let me try to explain the situation here. Well, can I? Let me explain the situation. Let me explain the situation, right? <laughs> if you want an answer, I can give it to you. Yes, sir. Now, uh, we've got a, a staff of people who are trying to do something that's never been done before. Sure. Secondly, the um, when UCDB was rolled out, the telecoms are also rolling out things. Now. the amount of information that has been distributed in the community. Thousands of, uh, or a thousand or more uh, yard signs, two websites, massive emailings, community meetings every two weeks. Uh, it seems to me that those of us who've been in, the, in these meetings mm -hmm. have the responsibility and no one else does to make sure our community is aware and involved and active. Now, I saw you in a video or a picture at a previous meeting. Mm -hmm. You should have gotten all that information there. Sure. And if you didn't, then it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to get you the information, mm -hmm. but you have to accept the responsibility mm -hmm. since you came to a meeting sure. and you didn't get all the information you should have gotten. Sure, I understand that. And that's right. why I'm here again to get that information. That's why we're having a conversation. <laughs> that's why we're all here. So the UCTB.net. Like Thank you. UCTB.net. Thank you. Click the UCTB button yeah. on the page. Thank Click you. Click the UCTB button right there. In fact, it's UCTB slash sign dash up. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's exactly why I'm here. My first meeting was right. People come to meetings. But they don't learn what we are talking about in the meeting. They come to the next meeting, and other people act as if we haven't given the information. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's the exact reason why I'm here. I got it. Thank you. People got to work on getting. And this video here is going to be looked at by a lot of people. And I want to make it absolutely clear that for the past several years, we've been working in this community to make sure that people know what's going on been in the newspaper, it's been on the radio, it's been in television, it's got uh, uh, yard signs, we've got email. What else do we need in order to communicate with people? If you've got any ideas, I'd love to hear them and we will implement them. Clearly, what we're doing isn't working, so maybe we should be. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it is working. Maybe it may working not well. work for a particular yes, right. individual. You're right, it's not yeah. working well to get the people signed up yeah. uh, is something you know but when I came to the meeting busted people out of that time people did not like it but uh, it really helped to get something done where uh, uh, some good things happen where uh, you know people start signing up and people found out that some things was going around right and now 
I see that things are getting better, right? You agree, right? So what we need to do is um, try to get to that 2,500 before the 1st of March because we more money the community will be able to get with that 2 to 5 percent if we get 2,500 before, uh, and you've got to let the people know that they can buy into it mm -hmm. because they're getting something out of it for their community mm -hmm. with the anchor institutions and all. Sometimes you've got to let people feel that they're going to be a part of it, you know, the community, because they haven't gotten anything for so many years when things come. And it's not but a little bit, but at least they're going to get something out of it. Maybe with uh, the last, oh, if somebody want to talk, and I'm talking too much, but you understand what I'm trying to say. We want to get up to that 500 and what we can do to help, uh, just like people with uh, property, for an example, I know somebody who had another property say, hey, we better sign that property up before the end of time so they won't have to pay so much uh, more to get that two or three thousand dollars, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll be, I, although I don't have nobody living there, I'm gonna sign up for UC to be before it's too late. So maybe other people gonna say that because we're in the target area. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> said, okay, right. Judge. I, I would just like to add that um, since following this since the beginning, there was money set aside for for marketing. Um, so they sent out graduate students to do door-to-door -to, -door to sign people up, and they had flyers in the yard signs. But most of the marketing was was um, having most of the most of the, the the responsibility was put on the yellow zone in the community itself. UCDB did not have any mass marketing. There was no bus signs. There was no TV ads. There was any. There was no mass marketing for this for this uh, this fiber rollout. So using this grassroots word of mouth thing, it, it takes, it, it's slow and it's, it hasn't worked. And I'm just saying that the money that they had, they could have spent, did mass marketing. It could have been on TV, it could have been on buses, it could have been everywhere. And everyone would have known about it, including the people that live in these yellow zones, but that didn't happen. So I, I will put all of the pressure on the community because I've been to all of these meetings since the beginning and and people were out doing what they can, and the churches did what I presume is what they could. They had flyers, and they tried to inform people, but I have to put a little bit of responsibility on the university and say that they didn't spend one dime out of that $30 million to put some stuff in some mass marketing attempts. Anyone agree or disagree with me? I, I agree, because I had never seen any never seen yeah. commercial. Hold it just a billboard. second. There are other people who have their hands up. Just I just, here, uh -oh. and then Carol. <laughs> Um, Did I have what, what I'm just going to say. Put your I'm, hand up. You sure. Yes, sir. Are you yes, going to have your hand up? No. I, I, okay. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm just following up with what he's saying. Um, yes, with 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 the marketing um, and the word of mouth, but uh, it takes the community to step up. I think a piece too. If we set these meetings, these benefit funds, so on and so forth and we went door to door and these people don't show, then in other words, they're just not interested. We can't make people be interested. You know, we do as much as we can, but like you said, we did need the mass advertisement and so on and so forth, but we can't make them come. We can't make them sign up. You know Carol. what I mean? Uh, just, just, I have a question and a comment. Um, the question is, they just have to be signed up, not installed, just signed up. Does that mean by March the 1st they have to be installed? No. Or just no, signed no, no, up? No. I want to make, make that clear. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, I, I do agree with some of the comments that have been made, uh, but I think at this point, for me, um, we could sit here and point the blame all we want to over and over again. I want to see us now, see where we are now, and go forward because we can sit here and spend all the time we want to on who's to blame and who didn't do what. We are where we are. So now what can we do for the next two weeks to make it better, or to do, do a better job? There's the only thing I'm, I'm, I'm interested in at this point. Well, there are really three aspects of this. First is the technical installation. Mm -hmm. 
issues. Then there are the operational issues of sending bills and uh, receiving uh, payment. Uh, and then the third is this question of how do we mobilize the community to uh, become involved in this in, a, in terms of institutions, in terms of the community technology centers, and so on. Now the first two points are really issues that are relevant for the policy committee and the technical committee and the staff of UCDB. And therefore, if anybody who has any of those concerns should come to the meetings, and there'll be a meeting at noon on Wednesday. That's where the decisions are made. Yeah, what, what meets the, what meets on this? the policy committee of UCDB will meet on Wednesday at noon at the city of uh, Champaign the uh, city building in the council chambers. And then the following meeting, or two, will be a discussion of the organizational form that UCDB will take after the federal grant ends, which probably will occur before then, but that'll be the organization that carries it forward. Everybody can come to that meeting and speak and if you don't come to that meeting and speak, then your voice will not be heard. End of story. That's where the decisions are made. Now this meeting is about the Community Benefit Fund. In other words, it's really not about certain aspects of the operation because the people who are involved aren't here. So we can express concerns about those things, but we're not going to be able to resolve it. And to the extent that we talk about the things we cannot deal with, we will ignore the things we can deal with which is the Community Benefit Fund, and what will happen as a result of that. Now let me say that this document that everybody has is a draft of a community document. Uh, this is not the document that, when revised, will go to the policy committee and from there to the three institutions, uh, the two cities and the university. We're going to have to write just as we did with the Community Benefit Fund resolution, we're going to have to write something in the language that can be voted on by those bodies. But this right here is an attempt for us to all get on the same page. Now, uh, if I can direct you to uh, just thumb through this with me. Uh, the first main thing I want you to look at is point number two, the mission statement. The UC2B Community Benefit Fund is an investment to end the digital divide in Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy. Now what this means is two concepts. One is the digital divide. And the second is investment. In other words, this is not a grant uh, like in a welfare situation. It's an investment to get <clears throat> results. <clears throat> and the results we're looking at is to end the digital divide. Now we all know that this is an important community reality. In other words, anybody's connectivity to the internet is valuable to the extent that everybody else is also connected. So that, for example, the school system cannot function properly if only half the students have connectivity at home. If everybody has connectivity at home, then the school system has a new capacity. But if only half the students, then it can't function. So it is a question of uh, our trying to overcome the digital divide for the entire community if we're to take full advantage of this. Same thing is true in health. These are the two big issues as far as I'm concerned. Number one, uh, hospitals are already making the information that they have about us as individuals available so that Christy or Carl has a process whereby if you have an account on the web, you can actually sign up, password protected, and view your medical records. 
If you don't have that, then you have to go in to see somebody. Uh, they're also developing devices that will send information to the medical uh, officials so that you don't have to go in uh, to be examined. Now, if our community does, is on the digital divide side, then our seniors are not going to have access to that kind of health care. So this is an investment to make sure that our community doesn't lag behind. Um, okay, so that's point number two. If there are any comments about that, because this is, this is really the, probably the most important sentence in this whole document, our mission statement. It's an investment to overcome the digital divide. And so everything we talk about has to be couched in that language. Otherwise, we're not going to be on the same page. We're not about the same mission. Okay. The manifesto I'm sure everyone is familiar with. But I want us to go to page five and point number six. What is the digital divide? <clears throat> and I think there's a certain amount of debate about this question. Uh, of what it is that somebody needs to know to be computer literate or, you know, literate in the digital age. But at the top, here are five questions. Do you have email and check it at least three times a day? Can you access your email with your cell phone? Do you have a personal web page or Facebook or MySpace, etc.? Do you own a computer at home and use it once a day? Do you have a broadband connection? And so, if you have answered no to even one of those, then we need to do some work so that we can become a much more functional community. If you follow the news, they're cutting back postal service on Saturday. So the old way of doing things is disappearing. And the need to adopt the new mechanisms are increasing rapidly. And therefore, every year that goes by that our community is not connected, then we are going to see deepening crisis in our community. Yes? I just had this image in my mind that I wanted to share that would sort of be a weird amen. Did anyone see the movie The Postman? Kevin Cosner. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? I don't. Oh, okay. It's a post-apocalyptic, um, but he's determined that the mail service is going to be alive. And it just shows this heroic effort, and he's recruited other postal carriers to bring back, essentially, the U.S. Postal Service. And it's, it was surprisingly really good and moving. And I say that to offer that's might, that might be how we want to consider ourselves in terms of really being determined and being on a mission to make this thing work no matter what. Even though that's said in old times, it feels like it applies to new technology. Good, thank you. So go look at the movie. <laughs> now at the bottom of the page, those are questions about individuals. Now let's turn to organizations. Does your board communicate via email and the web? Does your staff or members communicate via email and the web? Do you have a web page? Is your facility wireless? Do you have a broadband connection? Now, these are not absolute questions, but they make us think in terms of the utility of this technology. And where we're headed is for every organization to be connected and functional, every individual organization uh, and functional in this way. So when we think about the digital divide, we have to really think about what it is and how we can impact it. That's really the question. How can we <coughs> impact the digital divide? Now, the, uh, the main thing for us to talk about is point number seven. These 10 points cover, number one, what is already happening in our community. And number two, things that we need to develop in our community. So number one, computers. 
You know, I, I think the way to see this is that the points under number seven, right, the 10 points under number seven are the steps we need to take to help what's on page five become the reality. In other words, when you talk about individual use of the technology and organizational use, right, what we're trying to get to <coughs> is that so, so no individual and no organization will have to answer yes to these questions. So it's, you know, like that's, in my mind, that helps me to see we're doing points one through ten because in the end, every year we should be able to raise a number of people who can answer yes to all of these questions and the number of organizations, <coughs> churches, and so on who can answer yes, right? Now, uh, what I had in mind in terms of an agenda, and now that we're a large enough group, uh, was to break down into smaller groups to discuss this <coughs> and to discuss priorities because any, any committee that's set up is going to be faced with, uh, it's sort of like bringing people into the emergency room. You got to, everybody got a lot wrong with them, but you got to identify what are the immediate things that you have to do. And there's going to be really a small amount of money. This is not going to be a large amount of money. So we have to be really careful in terms of what recommendations we make for the community benefit fund. But more importantly, I think, we have to look at this from the community as a whole. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. Brian Bell, with regard to computers and classes. Brian Bell teaches a class, and the room is three quarters empty. If you go to this class for a short number of times, you can get a free computer. That has nothing to do with anybody other than being able to get yourself from wherever you are up in the morning and go to the class. And if you don't get to the class, then I'd like to know why. For example, if it's car fare, then that's a level at which the fund <coughs> could help. But if somebody can't get themselves up in the morning mm -mm. to get to the class, to get the skill to put themselves in the labor market, then I have to turn to the churches and somebody else to try to help motivate them because we won't be able to do it. It's as simple as that. So he's got a class, it's empty. Now, the real issue of the Community Benefit Fund is how do we fill his class? Hmm. Because if you go to that class, you get skills and you can get a machine for free. Who knows about it? You do. <laughs> and you have a church <coughs> and you do and you have a church and you got a church and y'all are in a church and how come people in that church are not in his class that's what I want to know wait a minute now who do you say I know are you, are you oh you say no really you said you knew what did you say what did you say Brian would you explain to everybody what the situation is in your class no would you you say you knew You've been to meetings. We've all been to we meetings. Do. Brian has. We know. <laughs> yeah, people know. We most, know. Most people know. I, I don't know. I've been doing this a long time. Um, my classes are Monday through Thursday, three to five. The classes are free, and if you come twelve times, I'll give you a machine. So that means you don't have to come consecutively Monday through Friday. Just, just show up twelve times, but then however you can show up twelve mm -hmm. times. It'll be twelve consecutive. Because here that might be new for. For at least one person here, so that's good to know. Yeah. If, if a person works during the time you have classes and can't get to your class, how, do, how could we work out something there? They work during the hours your classes are open. Well, we're trying to identify different labs, um, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so could they use another lab? Times to get oh, them. okay, See, that's possible. What was her question? My, my question is this: I have a lady right now who works. She doesn't make a lot. Of, she doesn't have a lot of money, but she works during those hours that his class is open every the days. Her problem is she can't get to his class during those times, but she comes to my class on Saturday. She's been coming con since the conception of the, our class, mm -hmm. and that's a couple of years. She needs a computer, mm. but she can't get to your class. So mm -hmm. what I'm asking you is, can we, can collaborate? we work together, yeah. and can we can you give her a computer? Because she's already been to my class more than 12 times. I, I, I haven't said no since I, but, I, but, I, but, I'm, but I'm just asking <laughs> you. Everything <laughs> is negotiable. Seems like to me that's something that might work out. See, yeah. I'm just, I'm just. That's right. But, but also, let me, uh, right. let me, let me also state that I mean, we have the same machines for 40 bucks. 
Oh, he did? We, yeah. He already knew that $40, man. Yeah. So we, again, I I tried to give most of the machines away for free to churches and nonprofits. Mm -hmm. But nobody knew that <laughs> until I talked to you the other day, right? I mean, I did not know that. It's possible. It's, it's been, possible that that you until didn't know I that. talked to you the other day. But yeah. Sister Carol made a statement in the meeting, and uh, and, that, and then I called you, and then I was able to find out, mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. And when I found out, I put that application in because I had some people in need yeah. at our church, you know. And then somebody was uh, not a member of the church, the full person, and I, you know, and it was good to know. So how can we get that information out? That you know, know. which is good. I mean, how yeah, do but, we? But you're I, on the mailing list, and we sent all the links and all the information. You no, know, I mean my husband's on the mailing list. Uh, uh, which I, I'm going to get myself our church on the, on the mailing list that King James if they go for uh, Gmail I'm not but I'm going to get on but uh, I don't want to take time right now but I'm going to get myself on the mailing list today the church is which we don't do did we don't have a full time secretary and we don't get that information as readily but but no we did not know about that you know how we can get as a non-profit so we can help people in the community. I did not know, but you did give me the information <coughs> once I got on there. But how do we get this information? Did you know, Pastor? Did you know? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I just wrote down certification because it seems like to me if if Brian's class has a has a structure and some things that people have to master then it might be, as Carol said, you know, going to her lab for so many hours gets them the certification. So when you say, what can the Community Benefit Fund do? It seems to me, one, it's having some funds available that might be able to get the $40 computers. And two, being able to coordinate and spread the certification thing so that there are more classes routinely scheduled at all hours of the week where people can, you know, get to that skills and machines in a way that, that wasn't possible before. See, this is exactly the kind of conversation that needs to go on. In other words, you look at all these 10 points, every one of these points impacts the digital divide in our community. However, we don't have unlimited resources and unlimited staff, so we can't just do all of this. But we have to have the kind of conversation that enables us to come to a decision and then we have to then negotiate that through the UCDB process. And then we have to all put our shoulders to the wheel to try to make it work because it's not going to be automatic. And most of it's going to be on the basis of the volunteer effort that all of us put into this. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. That's why these meetings are not simply about what we want to ask people for in terms of money. It really has to do with what are we going to do about ending the digital divide in our community, and that includes what little we can get from the Community Benefit Fund. But we're going to have to look for many, much more resources, and we're going to have to mobilize our community, like the brother said. In the end, nobody is going to help us but us. And if we don't start with that perspective, then we really think we're at a different historical period. This is not the era of John Kennedy and the 60s that we created all kinds of resources that were made available to the community. This is a dry up moment. This is a polarization moment. This is a moment when our community is in desperate straits. And the real development is going to be those of us who are here. What are we going to do? And these 10 points are really just an example of all of the things that we are right now doing. Give you an, a particular example. Cyber navigators. Out of the community informatics class at Gislas, people are now going to uh, Champaign, I mean uh, Urbana Library, and in the fall we'll be going to Douglas and Champaign Library. This then provides student assistance to people who need help with regard to computer literacy, et cetera. So in addition to the lab at Salem, the labs here at New Hope, there's also the public libraries where people can get help. Now that's 
a help process that does not involve funding because these are students who are volunteering and doing it as part of their curriculum. Uh, however, uh, see you just said something, Gisla, what is that? I'm intelligent, this is something new. The Graduate School of Library and Information Science, <laughs> Gisla. Okay. Yeah, we've used that term, I'm sorry. That it, okay. it, yeah. <laughs> now, if you go further down, Community Help Desk. This is the biggest area in terms of potential uh, budget item because uh, we had different visions of this. One vision was we were going to, if you remember, we talked about a ghetto geek squad type situation where we would organize people to have a price lower than Best Buy, but at the same time provide an entrepreneurial uh, opening. Mm -hmm. uh, that tended to not be too exciting because suddenly we realized that if we're sending people into people's homes, then there's a bonding situation, there's insurance, there's all kinds of issues of sending somebody into somebody's house. Mm -hmm. So that didn't seem to work. And then we started thinking, well, maybe what we could do is if we had a facility, a place, then we could maybe hire somebody part-time to organize volunteers and then have people be able to bring their CPUs and then that could be troubleshot. Some can be fixed right away, and others can be directed to where they need to go. And some of the equipment, uh, perhaps they need to go to Brian Bell and spend $40 and get a better piece of equipment. Because, you know, some people would be bringing up 386s and 486s and so on and so forth. <laughs> so, uh, but that's the reality we have to deal with. We really want to, as in the gumbo, stir up the pot and bring it all to the surface. So if you take that community help desk, that's a real situation. We really need to think it through. How do we make this happen with limited resources? How do we you know, network it together and, and make it work? Um, so in any case, this, these 10 points need to really be talked about thoroughly. So for example, if we say computers, Brian Bell is one issue. Are there any other possibilities in town where people are making computers available at low cost or uh, rehabbing machines or whatever. So that's one point. Connectivity. This is, of course, the UC to B project along with other things. Classes. We've got a list of community technology centers, but we need to know when classes are occurring in those centers, if there are classes, and if not, can we organize volunteers? I mean, Carol and Joe Lewis of Salem Church have a class on Saturday morning where they have to leave momentarily of seniors that come in every Saturday morning. So the question is, of all the other labs in town, what regular classes are going on so that we can then broadcast that so everybody knows where the classes are and when they are so that if people need skills, it will be easy for them to know what's the closest place to my house or wherever I am, my place of work to be able to go there and to get those skills that I need. So here we have another situation. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, along the lines of classes, um, one thing that would be helpful, uh, we're actually developing a lab here in the community, um, is maybe some resources for instructors, uh, curriculum development, mm -hmm. assistance. Um, those things will be helpful because we're finding it difficult to find instructors. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't want to wear poor Brian out. But, um, I can provide you with the curriculum. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I know finding, yeah. finding so I, teachers. I just wanted to address that while you were on class. No, of course. See, I think this is one of the roles of, the, of this process, yeah. is to find people who are willing to volunteer. Yeah. And there may be some kind of training for those volunteers, or, or some help starting the curriculum and, and learning uh, maybe what works, what doesn't work. So best sure. practices for those kind of things. Yeah. Well, one of the things we want to do is, no one has the magic bullet or the yes. you know, magic answer. For that. But, uh, for example, we have a, uh, a lecture series called The Digital Divide. And there are many uh, examples that come forward in that lecture series about what's going on in schools and hospitals and, you know, the whole town. So those lectures are very useful to give you a background and a context for any new lab. Uh, because the whole point of a lab is to not be a silo 
but to be set up so it interfaces with the library, the schools, and, and so on, because the people who are coming there are going to need that kind of connectivity and that, that relationship. Um, um, can I stop you one moment, please? Mm -hmm. Just like what the gentleman just said here, and that's where uh, the university of Illinois and possibly Parkland College can come in as our resource. And I know y'all the university is too, uh, uh, to a certain degree, but I'm just talking about those departments where they do have those people and those resources that they can give to you all with the curriculum and instruction people and all that, that they can train in. They got all of that there, they're in our backyard. That they can give that to y'all so they, they can train these people so they can give them to us, right? Well, I think the community, we have a new head of the university in town, as we all know, Phyllis Wise. I knew that. And uh, the university has decided that instead of the original plan where the university was going to essentially pull out, be a participant in, but not a, a director, of the UCB process. When she got to town, uh, she thought that that was the wrong decision and that the university is going to stay involved. So that's the first main point. But the second point is that the university is itself going through changes <coughs> in terms of the technological organization of the university. If we have a community group that is organized, is on the same page, then a dialogue can begin with the university. Without that, there's going to be no university initiative that's new. Now, everyone knows that, or should know, this document right here um, is a study that we did of 80 different anchor social institutions. This is a document that will tell you exactly what's going on in Champaign-Urbana with regard to technology. These two volumes here, yeah, and it's <coughs> online, uh, and you can, you can get these documents. Now, the question is, how is a university going to interface with the rest of the community? Now, you put this in a national framework, and the universities in this country have essentially created themselves as a moat, like a feudal moat, isolated from the community. Mm -hmm. But with this technological thing of BTOP, new things are happening. For example, there is a national program to try to get research universities to extend connectivity <coughs> to the contiguous areas around the university where the bottom line is students and faculty having maximum connectivity at home and a byproduct, anybody else that's in the area will also get it. Uh, we also have on the table, and I think people should realize this, four different proposals on how this connectivity is going to be rolled out to the entire community. And one of them is a venture capitalist who's got $50 million to put on the table uh, for five different cities. The one he's chosen so far is Seattle. Champaign-Urbana is on the short list. So it's entirely possible that in the next two or three months it would be announced that it's not just North Champaign, but it's the entire community that will get this connectivity. On the other hand, there is also a couple of public options that are being put forward. A co-op model and in Urbana, they're talking about extending this out as a utility that would be run by the city. So there are lots of options. So what I'm saying is that if the public, if us, if we want to be involved in this conversation, the only way to be involved in this conversation is either, one, to show up at the meeting, right? I think we're all aware you've got to show up. It's like court. If you don't show up, you know, you don't have a say. So this is the same thing. So that's, uh, or secondly, talking to the people who are going to make the decisions, which essentially are the people who are on the policy committee and the two city councils. That's the only way the community is going to make an impact on the decision-making process. 
impacting the two city councils and or the UCDB process. That's why we're having these meetings here, so that we can educate ourselves and so that when we go to the meeting, we can ask and make statements that are relevant. Because if we stand up and say something, if you'll pardon the expression, uh, that's ignorant, uninformed, we're not going to make any difference at all. It will be zero in terms of its impact on policy. And that's really where we are now. That's why we're having a meeting this morning to educate ourselves. Yeah. Um, you see, he, you see how he just dismissed me? You know, I don't like to be dismissed. And this is the last time I'm going to say something and I'm going to go back there. You know what? I, you know, what I just said, um, what I just talked about, and I'm through, uh, is generally the model that we, I've, I've been dealing for 50 years in this community. And that's how we've worked in the past. Uh, you know, the different, what, and I just answered here, but now we are pawns in something else, P-A-W-E-N-S. And I hear what you're saying, because there's a different agenda, sir. And I understand what you're saying, but I'm going to go back. So uh, uh, so the university got a different agenda, and that's what you just said. I understand where you're coming from. Um, <laughs> you, you're just looking like that, but brother, I got you. I got what you're saying.